Everybody put your hands together for today's guest, the wonderful, the lovely La Cruz Music! <laughs> Yes. What's up? I love that. Thank you for the. Thank you. Hey, buddy, buddy. Thank you so much for hey. the claps. We appreciate it. Once again, we are going to be turning off the sound alerts. You guys can still do the woos. It's just the sound is so disruptive. And we it just. <laughs> every time, every time something goes on, it's like, woo! And I forget what I'm woo! talking about because I'm a stoner and that, that just that doesn't work for me. This is like constant distract. This whole thing, this whole streaming thing has been so hard for me as someone who has ADHD, mm. who already has a hard time with, you know, like talking to people. Uh, and then you add on a chat and oh ha God, and you add me. on, you know, bells and whistles and stuff. It's just so distracting in every way. Uh, how was it for you getting into the streaming world? Are, are you, uh, How are you with... <laughs> I mean, Talking about it, like... I, like, I mean, I started streaming, this is like, it's about a year now that I've been streaming, but a couple of months, only since January that I've been on Twitch, but like, having, like, playing, like, if I'm trying to get, like, emotional into a song and then I see people, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, God damn it, like, I'm still, like, holding this note out and, like, I can't, <laughs> I have to respond to this. Um, but it's interesting, though, because I feel like, you know, uh, you know, playing gigs at bars or like at or doing like the kids party stuff that I do for work like I'm s I feel like I've gotten used to having to perform when everybody else is doing stuff whether there's a phone ringing a kid crying somebody screaming and I'm like okay <laughs> like the live streaming I think forced me to amp up my uh, ability to deal with the distraction not that I'm expert at it or anything cuz it definitely took a while with the streaming cuz my eyes were like <laughs> right, right, right. Look. Yeah, you're trying to read, you're trying to perform, you're trying to, well, me, I'm trying to talk to people, and, like, there's just everything's going, Penny, what's up? What up? <laughs> hey, Penny. Can't hear in it fast in my head. I want to hear her say Crayus. Crayus? Oh, Crayus, yeah. Crayus. So my last name is it's Crayus. Crayus, oh, my bad. It's okay. Um, you know what? I really, I mean, like, if I was reading it, I would get confused too, because people were like, if you think of Zeus, uh -huh. it looks like Cruz. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I was like, I, I would get it wrong also. But thank you. I'm Deuce. Wait, see, okay, Deuce Penny, is it Deus? Are you are you D Dius Dius too? Because I'm Crayus. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, no, I just okay. like everybody every time you're in someone's stream I think they call you La Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's true. I've I've been too shy to be like, excuse me. Could you not say my name completely wrong? Jerk. What is it's up, okay. wild no, but no. sober? <laughs> yeah, I, so you 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 don't get offended. No, I don't get offended. I just feel I just never know when to like everybody's like having a good time and I think I always get too embarrassed to be like, Hey, it's actually this and I don't wanna like make the mood or whatever different i'm like it's okay i i would get it like you know so I, I would get it wrong how do you so then how do you say your screen name your 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 channel name? uh l a crayus crayus yeah God. see no you know what this is this is what i'm learning too because i was trying to my name is Lori ann crayus right 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 and i was like Lori ann crayus is too long for an instagram handle too long for like <laughs> anything let me just shorten it L.A. Crayus, easy. And I'm like, shoot, still, it's difficult to, <laughs> like, get right. Because, like, people are like, are you from L.A.? Is your name is La Cruz? Are you LaCroix? Are you, like, I was like, yo, no, I'm not, like, seltzer water, man. <laughs> I'm not seltzer water. I'm not flat seltzer water. I'm I... flat seltzer water. <laughs> no, that's, that's been the struggle, for real, because I'm like, I don't know. I, I tried to shorten it because I was like, nobody's ever going to spell Lorianne correctly maybe they'll spell la cray use correctly but it's 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 been a thing so i'm just like it's if i say it enough yeah. um who's that actress uzo Adob aduba see I'm, I'm i'm a jerk but she was in uh she was crazy eyes in um orange is a new black 
Oh, she's she had, crazy eyes. Okay. Yeah, she had this whole speech where she wanted to change her name to like Molly or something, and her mom was like, "What? No, you're gonna keep, you're gonna keep it Uzo because if they learn to say Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, Dostoevsky, and they learn to say all these names, like they're gonna learn how to say, how to say yours." And so uh, I'm like, "All right, we say Sarah Bareilles, right? It's mm. not Bear Eyeless. Bear Eyeless. <laughs> Bear Isles." Bear Isles. Yeah, like Bear Giles. Uh, <laughs> well, that you know, I have a I have a weird last name myself. Um, mm. It's 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 Lawfer, and and my whole last. I I, don't, I can only imagine that growing up, coming up, people were just like, uh, Lorian Kurt Cruz, yeah. and Mine is mine is a uh, mine was Laffer, Lawnmower, uh, Lawnmower. <laughs> Uh, 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 Laughlin, Laughler. For whatever oh reason, gosh. they put an L E R at the end of my name a lot. <laughs> Laughler. Oh, it's like it's mad Long Island talk of like when they put like R's at the end of. Is that Long Island thing? <laughs> like my sister's Carmella, but they would call her like Carmella. Carmella. Over there, I'm like, where hey, is it's Carmella. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Get over here, Camella. Camella. <laughs> they do that here, here in the Midwest. Like Toledo, I've definitely heard older gentlemen at the diner saying Toledo or Toledo. Uh, I've heard <laughs> yeah. o- Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Um, wow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, Ohio, Ohio. For being uh, north, we are the most redneck ass state in the in the in the north. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You go. Mark. You go. That's huh. the R. That's why there's an R. It's yeah. for. It's for everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> it's for everyone else. <laughs> uh, no, they they uh, you go you go even in Toledo, which is is about as north. Like we're about ten miles from the Michigan border, mm. so it's about as north as it gets. And it's Michigan, and then it's Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Like if, even going outside the the city limits here, if you go out a little further into the corn fields and the, you you get like a twang going on, and you get like, hey, what are you doing or man, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. dur, 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 dur. it's like it's very off putting. It really is. I remember I was taking a road trip from uh, like New York to Arizona, and one of the stops we were at was Kentucky, and <laughs> we get there, and I was talking and. Like he was telling me, he's like, "You're speaking too fast." I'm like, "Oh my god! Oh, sorry. Wait." And like, you know, it's really nice down there because you know they, it's like they they take their time to tell the story. I'm like, "Oh wow!" I was like, "This is nice." Like, yeah. like we're actually, if I ask, "How are you?" You're actually gonna tell me <laughs> who you are. <laughs> tell you all about it. This is it. great. <laughs> like yeah. this is great because you actually want to stay for the conversation. <laughs> like this is, and they take their time. Yeah. To like lay it out, I'm like, oh. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, it is nice. Like, cause uh, Kentucky's right below us, and and oh. and there's like, so it's like Ohio, Kentucky, and then it's Ohio, Michigan. So it's such a weird place uh, to yeah, be. Like Ohio is is just like the, it, it. I mean, down south, southern Ohio, you, they might as well be in the south. It's like cause south southeast Ohio is like West Virginia, and then yeah. south Ohio is, is Kentucky. I'm and gonna then need to pull up the map now. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I need to see, like, because everything, was, like, north, like, here, I'll east pull it coast, up for us. west coast, but then, like, everything else, like, I just lose. Like, I don't, if you ask me to, like, place, you know, Wyoming and Wisconsin and everything, I'm, I, I'm lost. <laughs> I forget. If you give me, like, a blank map, oh, that. I always forget. Hold on. There. I'm gonna put one in the thing. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're doing this. <laughs> we're doing this. We're we're gonna it's give like, everybody a geography <laughs> lesson here. Just so. Do you everyone... remember that song? Did you ever have to do that song in school where they like learn all the fifty states and it's like Alabama and Alaska? Arizona, um, Alaska. no, but I saw it on um Animaniacs. Oh yeah. I think they did it. Animani- okay. See. Oh look how right, crappy f- this picture is. But see that I'm just. I, so I always assume that Virginia. Is like in Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina is way further down south than it actually is no, in it's, comparison it's, to Ohio. It's right there. It's right yeah, there. And then when you look crazy. at like Maryland and stuff, the thing about Maryland is is that they're kind of country in Maryland. <laughs> like we got, I got family in like in Baltimore and Annapolis, 
And they and they have like a kind of a southern draw. It's like, hey, Mike, you know, but they're still like East Coast as fuck. But like, yeah. but they still have like this weird southern thing going on. Hillbilly algae. <laughs> we got mixes every. It, it, well, America is just like that. So, like, where are you at in New York, if you don't mind? Oh, yeah, that's cool. I'm in Long Island. Um, oh, so you're like. I was born in Queens. Oh, and I'm tight. in Long Island right now, yeah. Awesome. My cousin just uh, bought a place out in Long Island. Uh, oh, word. Ba- base, Bayside? Is that a place? Oh, yeah, that's like Queens. That's probably like 40 minutes from me. Oh, for real? Maybe that's yeah, not yeah. where you got it. it they, they said it was in Long Island. I don't know. It's not like I know. I mean, Bayside, Bayside's like borderline Queens, Long Island. That's I like got you. pretty much that. But actually, I just moved into a new apartment this weekend. Nice. In somewhere else in Long Island, but that's why like I have nothing <laughs> on my walls. Oh, I, thought, I, I thought you did that it. for us for for this. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, that's that is exactly right. Like, I'm gonna make place. this. No, yeah, I, new you apartment moved. <laughs> just for you. Yeah. I swear, I turned my whole life upside down. So I flipped it around <laughs> so that I could have a blank wall for this yeah. podcast. Exactly. Uh, no, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how we. Oh yeah, because of like vernaculars and colloquialisms, that, like the the ers and the ders and the murders. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird how people's uh, dialects all change from region That's to region. That's the thing. People don't even think that I'm from New York. That's like, why I was. Visit other I thought places. you were like Rochester or somewhere where they, See, their accents yeah. don't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people are like, "You're not from New York." I'm like, I. I am. I was born here. I promise. Yeah, I promise. I promise. And everybody either thinks I'm from like California or something. I thought you're from but California. Yeah. No, and it's fair. <laughs> I mean, I've it's I've gotten it a lot, and I was, I, you know, it's it's cool. I I dig it. I'm like maybe because I'm not. I don't know. The there's a typical stereotypical like New York thing where everybody's like, "Bus, do not like color my teeth, blah blah blah." Like that, yeah. that's definitely. Yeah. That's my that's my boyfriend definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that, I you know, I used to love that accent a lot when I was younger, but mm. I've learned to not care for it that much. Like the really? East Coast accent has kind of gotten kind of kind of ugly to me. Which I no offense everybody <laughs> in the East Coast, much so love. Much I have so I have family out there. I got friends, very good friends and stuff. It's not like I have this horrible thing against the East Coast and their and their ugly accent, but it's just <laughs> it, it's no. just it's ter- well, no, like those hardcore like Jersey no. Shore type, oh, no, 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 you know, like that hardcore type, you know, the, uh, especially when you hear someone like super ignorant talking, it's just like you're just like, huh. but that's like anything, right? Like you hear super ignorant mm-hmm. Southern person talking. You sound, you hear like a super ignorant, like uh, even someone from the UK, you know, some way, who, who, what, what do they call the the lower, uh, do I have any UK friends in here? What do they call the lower ones, the lower Oh, ones? Donna, yes, New York. New That's York. Not, that is exact, you're right, Donna. New That's York. Yeah. Y a w k. If I'm looking over this way, I'm looking at the chat, I'm not. Oh, it's all good, uh, me too. Being I'm... a Gen Z distracted, like. <laughs> <laughs> actually no i'm not even lying it's a millennial it's all of us yeah oh yeah we do it i do it all the time just, yeah i'll just start looking <laughs> i'll just start looking at my phone in the middle of a conversation they think we're I- arrogant but we're aggressive yeah i don't mind yeah. the aggressive part i like the aggressive i like the aggressive i like the realism i spent i spent years and years in california i, I like 13 14 years in southern california mm. and oh wow which I love. I love San Diego. I love Southern California. But there is a uh, there is a lack of character that is that is very apparent. And it took me a really long time to really make friends and bond with people from the West Coast uh, because of that. I think you know because there is this sort of avoidance of of like uh, a, a, real. a real interaction you know like yeah. like there's like uh, there's a thing a uh, famously they say the california no which is they just don't respond you know the in, <laughs> instead yeah no it, instead of saying no and dealing with the ramifications of saying no and dealing with the ickiness of of the situation they'll just yeah, ignore yeah. you like boundaries right just but like, whereas in in ghost. in a place like new york or in the you know in the East Coast where you have to dig your fucking car out in the middle of the winter you know like where you really have to like 
you have to like put on clothes to survive the 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 environments you know yeah. out here and i i think that just builds a, a certain amount of character in people i mean the you get you you hear a no from some people in, in from New York. You know they are are ready and willing to be like no no fuck you no <laughs> don't fucking ask me what the fuck wrong with you ask me? why no, would you so even true, ask though. me? That's so true though. I didn't like that's a you know I've been hearing that that like the weather is what makes you know everybody a little bit tougher like depending like especially here in New York. I mean, oh my gosh, you guys probably get it worse in Ohio with your winters. I just saw your post like on Instagram a week ago, and it was snowing. What was oh, it yeah. in April or like? Yeah, it was the end of April, and it was fucking. No. There was like a f- foot, two feet, a foot and a half of snow. Yeah, it's fucking garbage. No, garbage, no. garbage weather. Yeah, but it definitely makes. Uh, what's it called? My friend, he was telling me like he had visited some other state, but he missed how mean new york people could be he's like i it it doesn't feel real if everybody's being too nice and too polite to me i'm kind of i don't believe it i need to be greeted at the airport with like get over there (laughs) (laughs) No, and i I started to miss it too because you know if i went on vacation and it's all nice and airy and everybody's saying hi to me (laughs) i'm like i i like like i'm a usually bubbly person but then i also kind of miss like people not talking to me because i'm like oh yeah all right cool like (laughs) i love I don't know. Be mean. Maybe it's like masochism. Well, anybody when you're shoved into a, a place like New York where there's just you know 20 million people rammed yeah. into this little tiny area of the earth, it's like man, it, you 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 start putting up, you, you start building calluses to people. Yeah. You start building this like just fucking get out of my way. You know, like it's just this when there's just so many people around you, and and I mean it's just. You know, especially with this last year, you really saw how how that many people stacked on top of each other turns really bad. Yeah. Um, when anything goes wrong, anything you know, like yeah. anything can go wrong, and then you have twenty million people stacked on top of each other, and trying to figure it out, and trying to figure this shit out, and, but and also each twenty like person independently having their own solution. Like, there's, there's always. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they got their own. It's like answers. one thing, you know. If we're, if we're somewhere else, you know, other like I, I always think about it, like in the United States or other places, like where independent thinking is praised. Like in one hand, it's it's awesome because you get to celebrate individuality. Like it's you know, it's praised that you think for yourself. It's praised that um, you have your own thoughts or something. But at the same time, you know, sometimes it makes it really difficult for everyone to find some kind of common ground to cooperate for one like for something important and it I, I, i'm not i'm not, i'm neither here nor there but it's like it's always something interesting to me cuz i'm like independence is great for opening your mind up pushing your individual self to like you know go somewhere uh against what society is telling you but at the same time it makes it really difficult sometimes to create community because everybody's got their own like <laughs> way of doing things yeah. and I, I don't know it's both but i'm all for it i want <laughs> yeah. all the problems <laughs> yeah no i mean it makes for some interesting li- living <laughs> it makes yeah. for some interesting living that's for sure um yeah. the, the, the you know like new york is so diverse with people it, it just from everywhere i think it i mean that was that's always been sort of the great challenge of creating a society like the united states uh, you know, they call it the great melting pot, but you have mm-hmm. all these people from different tribes, essentially different, uh, different uh, customs, different dialects, different, you know, just everything's different. And then when you have your own idea and they have when when people come to this country with their own ideas and own customs, you know, acclimating into the American way, which is basically made up of everyone's sort of custom sort of blended together you know we have yeah. fucking fusion tacos now uh <laughs> <laughs> like asian speaking fusion about south san diego <laughs> i mean south C- california Ex- tacos hey hey yo so i'm good. i'm going back i'm tacos. going back on wednesday and i'm going to get some carne asada fries uh-huh. i'm gonna go fucking get some taco shop getting some burritos Fish tacos are so good out Fish there, dude. fucking I'm jealous. tacos I can't wait to get back over there. It's I'm very excited. I, I think I need this. But, uh, you know, like people just trying to come together and make things work with their own ideas. 
I mean, yeah. it's no wonder that we do have the differences that we we have in this country. Right. You know, it's like you have all these different people that come together with all these different ideas, trying to make one idea work. And you know, a, a lot of people point out how like there's some um, there's some other countries who have systems that work better for everybody. But and, and you know, like in northern northern Europe. European countries that have like socialized medicine and everybody agrees that the taxes should be high because of blah, 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 blah. But these are like very homogenous yeah, countries. Right. So making right, a comparison right. of America's problems compared to we should be doing what they're doing in Copenhagen, you know, like yeah. it's, it's like, yo, we have like, like every, hey. we have everybody from everywhere. It's it's not just one lump of white people who all agree that, yeah, we should be taking care of our own. You know, it's like, no, <laughs> comparing America to these the success of these smaller homogenous countries is it seems kind of moot to me. The point is kind of moot because it's like it's not even dealing with the same kind of culture. Uh, you're you're yeah. dealing with a culture that's they've been solidified for hundreds and thousands of years over there, and then for some countries, but you, right. but for us, it's like we're a culture that's been sort of building upon itself for the last you know very when we're relatively young. Um, yeah. So it's uh, seafood tacos off the trucks. Gotta have some risk in your food, bro. Penny. Oh, so good. It's that that's okay. If you've had seafood tacos off trucks, then you are probably immune. For every good, yeah, you don't <laughs> even need delicious. the you don't need the vaccine if you if you've eaten seafood off a truck in Southern California. I'm just kidding, everyone. Do not take that as real. <laughs> I know you know I'm kidding, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> He's he, not. He actually told me right before we got on. Yeah, the, fucking <laughs> fuck those vaccines. Eat some fish Mike tacos. Actually, Mike told me right before. <laughs> we got on. Like, actually, okay, La Cruz music. This is gonna be a total anti fat a vax. <sighs> This whole time is anti-vax show, so no. so I'm gonna mispronounce your name the whole time, and we're gonna tell Sounds people good. not to get a vaccine. That's that's exactly what the code was. <laughs> I said when you say my name this way, that's when I know to send the army of anti-vax. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> also, fuck masks. Don't wear a mask either. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm doing everything I can. That the algorithms are gonna be like anti-vax, no mask. They're gonna be like what? Shut them oh, down. D platform. What's it? Your lady friend Bonnie, USA versus Canada. What in? in I'd still like going on a cruise. Hey, <laughs> go on a cruise with LA Crayus. I would. Psh, are you kidding me? When it's time, see, we should definitely do like an East Coast cruise tour. We'll get like all the Twitch streamers and all of us get to like play. That'd be dope. You know. I can that'd be pretty cool. I think I it. agree. And Bonnie, you said USA versus Canada. You know what? Okay. I used to live in Canada for like three years, so Bonnie. I'm a fan of both. Bonnie. Where'd Are you, you from Canada, Bonnie? Yes, Montreal. Oh. Mon yeah. Montreal, which I don't know how to say it correctly. Uh where where'd you live in Canada? Why? I lived in I lived in Vancouver for like three years. Ooh, I was like six to West nine. Coast? Like like yeah, West. Yeah coast and um yeah there she goes montreal love baby montreal i you know what i i give credit to canada for um helping me to appreciate nature my mom used to take me every weekend to the burnaby mountain park and like they had totem poles and giant mountains overlooking like the water oh and God. we're at this gorgeous park every weekend and then we'd bring a giant bucket of kfc yes <laughs> Fuck you goddamn yeah. right. You goddamn right you did. I was like, let's enjoy nature and get fried chicken. Bitch, that is what I'm Hell saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I love, dude. That but that's what I love about I grew up with a big Mexican family and that's how we roll. I mean, we just yeah. fucking show up at this beautiful place and we just have our chips and our fucking garbage food. Like you yeah. fucking our our tamales and, and our rice oh, and beans and good. fucking hot pork. It's like all the shit that shuts down your 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 internal organs and clogs them up. We're enjoying <laughs> nature and, and yeah. killing ourselves at the same time, SA. As boop, long boop. as you Tastes good. <laughs> You're gonna die happy. YOLO! <laughs> Fried pork in the street. In my belly. They call it murder. Murder. <laughs> yeah, but you eat bugs too and you don't even know. Yeah, you know what? I don't care. But that, 
Yeah, I can eat bugs. I'll eat bugs. Uh, you know what? I heard the crickets have a lot of nutrition in them, actually. And that's probably what we'll be it. eating in the future. We'll probably end up eating bugs because of our terrible mass production of, of meat in this country. is just this so is awful. True. We'll probably end up having to eat cricket protein um, due to yeah. our own fucking horrible situations that we put these animals in we're probably eating bugs in the fruit too oh right? yeah we do the, Definitely. the fda allows a certain amount of like rat <laughs> feces bugs <laughs> i'm serious this is not a lie no yeah the, I, the, I believe it I there's believe a it. certain amount that pretend. is allowed to go through uh in our food uh, just because that's how that they're just you know mass production of food is you're just gonna have rat shit and, and shit yeah. and and, and bugs in your food. That's just how they're like, it's just going to happen. <laughs> what are we going to do? It just, you're I gonna hope have you guys all had lunch already. Because <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have my bug infested, rat feces infested. Yeah, yeah. Sun chips. Sun What's chips. up now? Um, I, I better get this because last time Wild But Sober went to bed before he got to hear his question asked. So I'll make sure I get it oh, out of the way. Oh, you have a question? I yeah. Mean, if, and, and by the way, anybody who's new to the channel, if you do have a question for, um, for, for I was going to say La Cruz. If you have a question for La Cruz over here, uh, go ahead. Use Please. the fresh, <laughs> use the fresh points, uh, the fresh bars uh, or the channel points. It only costs one fresh bar. And uh, you, it just helps me keep track of the questions. So if you do have a question for um, Lori, please do throw them in the yes. things. Cray use. I know. I'm. I know. No, we're. <laughs> I, I'm being. I'm being silly. Okay. I'm being silly. Reina. Reina. We did duet. Oh my gosh, Reina. I need to tell you that when I was making the like, I had never done Instagram reel duets or TikTok duets. And that was a good the, one, by the way. Was, that was. Oh, awesome. thank you. I liked it. I tried doing I saw, it too. I sucked. <laughs> I, I I sucked at doing the video because when I first made the video, it didn't have audio in it, and then I had to. I was like, "What? You got to re-record this audio? Like, what is this mess?" Dude, hey, could you get it to sync? Were you having a hard time syncing too? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that you had to record the audio separately. Like, you had to do the video and then separately, or like if I used headphones, it wouldn't sync right, and it sounded like I was completely off. And yeah. I was like, "No, I swear." I can wait i still don't get it <laughs> you know it's, it's it's nuts i was terrible papa sweet thank you tell valo i said hi and make sure you give him a nice big kiss on the lips for me for sending oh. you over um donna's not eating her salad for lunch now oh it's okay oh I think you're, the bugs will give you protein yeah no the bugs are totally cool for your <laughs> for your protein I mean, that's life. If you want some lettuce that grows outside, people's always seem shocked if there's a bug in it. That's normal. Free, Free protein. protein. Yeah, Boom. I swear. Boom. That's right. Bonnie, you got the right you got the right outlook. No, you're right. You're right. Um we found some morale mushroom. Well, my sister did. She found some morale mushrooms and she was like, make sure you soak these in salt water, then cut them in half and soak them in salt water again because there's gonna be lots of bugs in there. Uh <laughs> that's new to me. So I've been eating bugs because I love uh, my Alfredo bug mushrooms, but yeah, okay. Well, that these are ones that they found it out in the out in nature, so it wasn't like oh. processed. It wasn't okay. sent it through. It wasn't like Stop and Shop. No, mm -hmm. it wasn't anything that was. Uh, I found a bug in my mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, I found a bug in <laughs> mushrooms. I, I found God in my bug. mushrooms. I found God in my fungus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, wrong kind of mushrooms. Okay. Uh, just strengthens oh. your immune system. Uh, <laughs> that's true. Uh, this is my first intro into oh. LA. Can we see the vid and get a taste? I sure. did follow. Penny, you know what? Why not? Sh should we just play? I mean, it was requested by, by someone in the the chat here. So what do sure. you think? Should we run it? We can run yeah. it several times. So we can run it as many times as we want. So. <laughs> So what we'll do the little bit of the premiere. Let's see. So uh, what's it called? Penny. Yes. OK, we're all like hyped up right now, but I'm telling you that this video is kind of sad, but it's OK. We have feelings. You know what? <laughs> I, this will this will bring us down because, again, I forgot that for, forgot to do this. Um, so this will this we're going to I'm going to ask one more question. Oh, yeah. And it's a very important question because while sure. but sober asked it. 
Do you prefer waffles or pretzels? And now I'm not saying those little tiny fucking cracker pretzels. No, that you I get. hate no. No, big soft out of the oven, fucking with the big chunks of salt yeah, on I want it. The that thing that comes in the hanger. And they, the, the yeah, cook. exactly. And you got yeah. the cheddar cheese dip yeah. that you just dip it in there and you slather exactly, it up. Yeah. So which one, waffles or pretzels? All right, just because of that, just because I'm thinking about it now and it's lunchtime, pretzels. <laughs> With Pretzel. spicy mustard or beer cheese. Beer cheese. Yeah. There you go. I think it's like some pretzel gang. Cheese. Yeah. There's pretzel. one more for the pretzel gang. You guys. You guys. Yeah. Soft pretzels, though. Soft pretzels. Yeah, no, hard, none of that. Hard pretzels are not my jam. That's unless they're dipped in chocolate. Oh, shit. You're right. That is the only reason I will You're have right. It. Whoa. It's yeah. You're right. You're right. Damn. I didn't even yeah. think about it like that. Didn't even think about it. Okay. So uh, why don't we do this, er, 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 buddy? We're gonna, I'm gonna set this up, make sure that this looks okay before we. Donna drink. says pretzels over here. Pretz yeah, that's right. Pretzels that's over what you get here. When you're like in the city and you go to like the the truck thing with the 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 hot dogs that have been like sitting in the boiled water, mm. and you get your pretzel, your knish. <laughs> pretzels over here. You get your knish. Yeah. Knish. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we got it pulled up. Oh no, eighteen seconds. Get out of here, Penny. Do you have some uh, pretzels to have while we watch the thing? All right, everybody, get your pretzels. Everyone, get your pretzels. We're gonna get watch your pretzels. the video. I'm a savory guy, than a sweet guy, despite my name being literally sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Papas. Well, okay. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna right here. I'm gonna add the savory and sweet to your name, Papas. Right? Because it could be like potatoes, which mm. are savory. And sweet. So now your name is not just sweet. It's got savory and sweet. Hey, papi. Now you're Papa savory. Sweet. Papa sweet. Hey, papas. Okay. It's a potato. <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh, uh, wait. Wait. Is it sweet potato? Papa sweet. Is your username like supposed to be sweet potato? Oh, yeah. Papa sweet. Yeah. That. That. I bet it is. <laughs> I bet he's supposed to be a sweet potato. You're a sweet potato. All You're right, a sweet right. potato. All right, guys. We'll, we'll keep the hype going with this sad video. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's not It's not sad. It's a celebration. Oh, can I, like, put a little... Can I just say something really quick? Of course. You can say whatever it? you want. So, all right. I'm just going to... Because I'm going to... Let me just put pretty things under. So, this song... I'm in my new apartment right now, and it's crazy because... Five years ago or four years ago, this song was about an ex that I left because I really, he made me feel like I lost myself. And he had asked me at the time, I was like 25 or whatever at the time. He's like, if by 35, music doesn't work out for you. Like, what's your backup plan? And like, I think it shut me down for a while. But I had to leave this dude because I lost myself. And I was like, I feel guilty. We've been together for so long. Um, but I can't be in a relationship where somebody makes me feel like I can't dream or like be myself anymore. And it's kind of serendipitous that I got my apartment and that the song came out all at the same weekend because it feels like this was like symbolic of the new chapter of my life. Whoa. So this so is relatively recent, this whole situation? Oh, no. I mean, it was like four. This happened like four years ago, but like oh, okay. the the significance of the song, I feel like after that breakup, it took about like all this time to kind of pick myself back up again because I, I lost confidence for a long yeah. time. And, you know, getting myself to release music was a really difficult thing. And it's all because of where I was at in my head. So to put this song out and for it to be done and for the turmoil of, all the engineering and everything and loving it and hating it and loving it again and trying to get the story out so that people understood what it meant. It's a lot. So if somebody's out there and you're in a relationship or you're among a group of people who don't make you feel like um, the best or don't make you feel like, you know, the better version of yourself that you wish you could be, then you might have to let them go and you might end up being the bad person in their story but you gotta do what you gotta do and that's what this song is about and that's what this video is about 
Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much for that. All right, sure. guys. Um, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna switch over there, and hold on. We're gonna do it. I'm trying to do something fancy, but I don't know if fancy is going to work right now. Oh man. Oh man. Okay, hold on. I'm yeah. gonna be fancy anyways. Give Let me, me a second. Yeah, that's my list. Okay, you are gonna fancy your music. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, mine is muy mal too. Yeah, um, mine is muy mal también. <laughs> but you're practicing. Okay, I got you. I got you. I'm only half Mexican, so <laughs> I only <laughs> half understand what's going <laughs> on. Uh, I know I said I was going to do something, you guys. Give me one second. I'm trying to find. Got some pretzels. All right, nice. Penny. That's right. Okay, we're going to munch. I'm going to toast to you with my. Iced coffee. All right, we're doing this. We're doing this. I just Thanks, had. Penny. I just wanted to add something to this, just in case you guys want to have fun with it as well. So here we go. Um, here is the new video from our friend here, Lacrosse, <laughs> <laughs> Lori and Crayus. Uh, yeah. Her her new uh, her new woo, woo, single woo, 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 woo. this time and uh, and here is her video premiere which thank you so much for premiering it here I, I really do thank appreciate you it. thank you for having me I appreciate it all right here we go guys Fresh.
Smash. And we're back. What is up? Uh, hey, hey, hey. You know what? I was like, I had the emote wall up, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't have the emote wall. <laughs> <laughs> Not for a video premiere, so I'm sorry. I was it's okay. And I was gonna write you in the chat and then like it start it's I mess up. We're we're gonna watch this again, everyone. Okay. And this time we're not gonna have the emo wall on and we're gonna I'm not gonna be doing stupid stuff. And... I started putting stuff into it. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I guess we're doing emo walls. All right. Uh yeah. So, no, it's okay. It was a uh, I, I yeah, everyone seemed to have liked it, so I'm glad everyone's digging it. I loved it. Um, oh, thank you, Don. Thank you, thank you. How was so? So, tell us about this video shoot. Thank you for the hundred bitties, Mighty Mike. Hold, hold on, I gotta do this. Hold on one second. Mm. Mighty Mighty. Mighty Mighty. I, had, I just had to put the reverbs on. I like it. Amber, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, I oh, hope you guys Penny, en thank you. enjoyed that. No, I, I absolutely love the song, I love the production of the song. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you know, like just the whole feel is, is great. I mean, I I, I love R and B. I love that kind of music. Hey. Anyways, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the whole thing. I mean, I, I love D'Angelo. I mean, I love yes. Daniel Caesar right now. Is my favorite mm -hmm. right now current artist in the R and B yes. category. Daniel Caesar just killing it. Janae Aiko and uh, yeah. her. Oh my God, I just absolutely love what what they're doing with R and B right now. And um, uh, and I love that I love what you're doing with it as well because I Thank feel you. like it is you're taking a different approach to it as well. Uh, tell me about the production of this and um, what what went into it. Is that is that real drums or is that all real instrumentation? Yeah. Okay. So it's all um, what's it called? Uh, we going back to the recording of it, right? So like we drove up five hours to Ithaca to. Mm a cathedral that was turned into a studio. We recorded it live there, and there was <laughs> roads, bass, and drums. Um, what's it called? I was going to say. You know, it was, it was crazy, because the production of this, you know, I I didn't know what I wanted it to sound like. Like, I knew I knew it was R&B, but I knew it, I, I couldn't. I was having such a hard time communicating it, but I'm so glad that my engineer, Justin Matthews, like his expertise is working with like pop artists, but he was also able to reference, you know, like contemporary adult music, Radiohead, uh, classical music, like all the references I gave him that were my influences. Like I was like, I want all of this to kind of be in this piece. How can I get all of that? Um, what's it called? The biggest thing that I really wanted to make sure was that it sounded intimate and I, I kid you not, like the beginning process of like getting the first mixes and my first vocal takes, like I was having such a hard time with it because um, it wasn't sounding the way I wanted it to at first, but I think I also was trying to learn how to communicate what I did want and also learning that I really needed to know what I wanted it to sound like production wise in order to get it, you know, executed. And, you know, I think I used to think that I was like, all right, if I have an engineer or producer, they'll just be able to figure it out. But um, I really have to be so specific. I was like, all right, I want my voice mix to be like this. I want the piano mix to be like this. And mm -hmm. then like at some points, you know, at the end, like the pre-chorus, um, let you down. And I would tell him like, all right, I don't want it to be too drop. I don't want it to like drop out completely. I was like, can you add reverb and some delay at the end of that note so that it carries over into the chorus, so that it feels like this wash into the <laughs> chorus. Um, and when I first recorded it, I sang it the way I would sing at a live performance. So like, you know, a lot of high energy, but a lot of also like I would project loud and when i listened to the playback i was like oh my god I'm like this is so it sounds so annoying I hate, I hate my voice but then i realized you know you have to sing differently in the studio versus singing live yes and so if you want it to still be energetic but intimate like you have to sing it super intimate so you know like for this track you know i did like maybe seven vocal takes and i was like i heard what i was doing and i had to analyze i'm like all right let me see what I can get. And I, when I went and I recorded it and I did it completely opposite 
I, I just went super quiet and I was like, you know, just close to the mic and um You didn't push like, very hard. You didn't have to push very hard at all to sort of capture that that intimate upfront sort of sound that you were looking for. Right. And yeah. it was like manipulating the the space between the mic a little bit more mm. or like which words were gonna, you know, crack a little bit more and um, like I said, you know, I mean, I feel like even in a performance, you still have an intimate moment in a performance, but there's a different kind of energy or a different kind of way you perform in a live setting than in a recorded setting because the playback is just, it's just different. And so that was something I had to learn. And even the other song that I released, it's like an aggressive, more aggressive song. Mm. And when I sang it really energetically, I, I hated the way I sounded. I was like, oh my God, you're overdoing it. And I, when I went in to record it, I realized I just had to sing it a little bit more intimately. Um, oh my gosh, but any, if, if, if there are there any nerds out there? <laughs> any prog head nerds or whatever, if you're an Autometer fan? Like, I didn't know <laughs> that some of the song had changed meters so it's like in four four and then some parts are like seven sixteen and some parts are in like seven eight and i didn't know until i was working with the drummer like the part where is it this the so i was trying to work it out with the drummer and he's like i, I can't get it he's like oh my god no laurianne it's in like seven the one two one two one two three one two one two one two three one two three one two three <laughs> and then it goes one yeah. and it's back to four. Done. I was yeah. like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just goes like this. And it's so funny because people are like, oh my gosh, you're playing these odd meter stuff. And I was like, I'm going to hide because I'm not going to pretend that I'm this like cool person. I was like, yeah. I just, I think after listening to some Radiohead stuff and other like Herbie Hancock and stuff, I've been interested. I just like listening to, I it probably just like bled out of me almost. Or like even Brazilian music. Like I love I like I like getting in a groove, but also being like shocked by it. And I guess it kind of made its way over. But even the chorus too, it's um. So no. So I'm giving up now. Oh wow! That's also in seven. Seven. And I didn't. I, we we oh my gosh practicing this thing was like a nightmare <laughs> and then the, the the tempo map for this thing yeah ah! uh. <laughs> so if you're talking about production and recording it yeah. um to anybody who wants to know what a tempo map is like when you're recording you know you put a click and you have to choose the bpm so that everybody stays in time but for this because it kept changing meter we had to like tempo map it and it was, you know, first couple of measures was in four. And it was like 70 BPM or whatever it was. And then the next couple of measures, it's this. And then it's this. Mm. And it it was a nightmare. <laughs> I wish I had the paper somewhere. but um. It was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It looked like that. These are tempo maps, everybody. And if you're not, if you don't know what, if you're not into production or anything, you probably, this is, doesn't make sense to you. But this is like. I wish you could see my mouse in here, but um, this is like you're going along the lines here, and, and it's these were representing different tempos and different uh, 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 time signatures, and you can actually go in there and control it to sort of help the control like your your click and and that just keep it keep things orderly, keep it moving. Uh, but it's uh, it's definitely with a with a song like. Uh, Lori's new song, um, which, which I keep forgetting. Is, what is it? This is this is it? What is it? It's not this is it. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting. So, I'm so sorry. I'm this is it. <laughs> it's, uh, this time. This time. I'm so sorry. This time, y'all. <sighs> this time. No, it's okay. No, see. This, uh, it's. Like, th I'm, I've it's listened good. to it several it's times, like okay? To... Just so you know. No, I believe. See. <laughs> Just so you know. She's like, now I think no. you're lying to me, motherfucker. <laughs> you see really? you saying that? <laughs> kind no, of. Okay. I thought oh. temple maps were some kind of phone game or something. Yeah, see that that exactly. It was good. Uh, it was good for me to bring that up just so you could see it. It works. It, it just works like automation. If if you're familiar with automation, if you're automating like a volume, uh, you can 
just put in little like little dots that you can control and move around and you can turn down the volume at a certain point and turn it back up. You can do the same thing with tempo and time signatures in a sense. It was it was nuts the recording process too cuz we had to like so much of the time at the beginning was creating the tempo map. Because like, you know what it's funny I worked I worked with the engineer but he didn't he hadn't heard the song before we got into the studio. I was like how the hell are we doing this? And he I guess he didn't realize that both songs we were recording had odd meters in it and he was like oh shit. And I'm like e yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. You didn't ask me. Like yeah. <laughs> you thought this was going to be like a quick like plug in yeah. or whatever, but like we're sitting there and then also having to play to the tempo. And so, I mean, oh my gosh, there's so much that was done like in post like for automating it and like making sure everything sounded clear and whatnot. But the craziest thing, I guess if you're an engineer out there, the craziest thing that you'd probably want to like be like, Argh! pull your hair out. <laughs> we, it's, it's live, right? So they're live instruments. It's not MIDI. You can't like automatically change the BPM. Right. I was listening to it the original version and I was like this is too fast and he looked at me and he's like what do you mean like, <laughs> it's it, it's too fast man like this is this is not it and he's like so you want to slow it down I'm like <coughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> we 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 like slowed down a piece of it to like down three bpm like mm. three beats per minute and like we slowed down the tracks and I started, I had this like relief, but I also had this panic because I had relief. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, slow it down. It sounds right. Yeah. But I'm panicked because I don't want to tell you <laughs> that I need you to like oh. change. And it's like I said, there's odd meters in it. So to change the entire thing down three BPM. So if you're listening, yeah, if you're listening to the track, like we slowed it down three BPM. And um, if you're an engineer, then. I, you know, kudos to all of you. I, I have so much respect for engineers and live audio, like anybody that has to deal with like any of this tech stuff, especially after starting live streaming. <laughs> like I, I have zero <laughs> patience, but I've had to learn that you need to be patient so and have patient. enough, you know, self-control yeah. to not like <laughs> pull your hair out. Like, no, you just need enough hair. That's all. <laughs> 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 you know, and then it just ends up like this. Yes. <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> it. You know, because I try. I think it's like I try so hard to not be like that. I, I don't know to be. Uh, I don't know. It's okay. Like uh, I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it here. Whatever. But like as a as a woman in the industry, you know, I feel like we try so hard to we work like a hundred times as hard to try to make sure that we know everything. Because the second we ask a question or ask something to be changed, I feel like it's scrutinized like a hundred times more. Oh, of course she doesn't yeah. know. She's just a singer. <laughs> yeah. <God. laughs> uh. <laughs> Listen, sweetheart, just let me handle it. <laughs> honey, oh honey, honey, baby. <laughs> Darling, I know. I was just like, get out of here like you want to see me get mad um yeah but those are the things and i was just like all right screw it i'm just gonna you know you try so hard to know as much as possible so that you don't have to ask but i mean i'm 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 going past that now it's just like you know what i'm gonna ask yeah and i'm secure enough in like where my abilities are there's still a lot that i gotta learn as a musician as a live streamer as a performer there's still a lot i have to learn and that's okay but i'm not gonna think anymore that i'm any less yeah. Because of that. And it, it's taken me a lot to come to this like realization. But um I I'm telling you, like the process of recording this song between having the vision of what I wanted to sound like and then also gaining the confidence to speak up for what I wanted it to sound like. Cause I think I had a bunch of other recording experiences before where I didn't speak up yeah. because you know, I was afraid of annoying the engineer. Yeah. And I was like, I was afraid of like pissing them off and having to change all this stuff. Or I was afraid of sounding stupid. And for this, I was like, forget it. I've I've spent, I've like shelved too many of my songs and never put them out. I'm not doing it this time. No pun intended. But um, 
I'm not doing that. You know, it's yeah. just like if I want the voice to sound like this, I want the reverb to sound like this. I want the arrangement to be here. I need this thing to hit at this point. I want the bass thing to like come out like this. I want it a little more more gritty. Oh, speaking about that, there's three. I recorded the roads in like three studios. Whoa. And and it's so the roads, the initial roads that I used, like it was an older one, and it didn't have like this. Mm, like it, didn't it didn't have, have that growl. That. Yeah, it didn't have. It the didn't have the growl. Yeah. And like everything was, oh, everything was like clearer on top, but the the bottom mm -hmm. notes were like jammed. Oh. And they're like it's fine. I'm like it's it's not fine it's because not. this is. I was like I, I need that. Yeah. And so, you know, I had to. Those are the things I had to push for, and like feeling, I had to push past feeling like I was being too high maintenance. Mm by asking and I realized I was like you know what you know I Regina Spector um she recorded Samson I think more than like a hundred times and other people recorded I, I kept listening to different podcasts of artists and listening to how much they pushed and how relentless they were with what they wanted for the sound and how much they didn't settle and I tried to just secure myself in that and I was like I need a different roads to give me that sound or else and and this too like the there's a part in the song where it has the um like the, the all this stuff so you can hear it clearly like on my keyboard but on the certain roads like it wasn't as clean like the attacks weren't as apparent and it sounded like mush and i'm like you know the whole bridge is disappearing and you know people would think nah it's fine and i'm like if you're just saying that nah, it's fine yeah. and trying to get me to shut up like <laughs> It's, it's not, not fine. fine. It's not fine, motherfucker. <laughs> like, it's not fine, motherfucker. Like, yeah. I'm paying for uh -huh. to get this, like, to sound good. And yeah. so, um, I mean, and you know, like, with making songs. One, it's like making, it's like writing songs. It's like getting the thing out of you and then, like, not judging yourself for what you're writing. Because when I did first write the song, like, I wanted to cringe almost because I felt like it was way too, like, teenage diary almost or just way too it was way too on the nose and way too obvious like how painful it was like I felt like I wasn't being more creative with the lyrics or something and I knew it was right only because when I would sing it I'd, I'd cry because I'm like all right I can't judge myself like this is this is how I feel yeah I was like these are the words this is how I feel I don't need any like crazy imperfect rhyme inner rhyme blah 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 like all this techie stuff like i need to stop pressuring myself to feel like i need to do that yeah. and if i'm saying what i'm saying like i gotta commit to it so um for anybody uh thanks everybody for <laughs> hearing it out but uh the whole process of this was just really a big practice in sticking to my guns yeah. And I feel like for me, just as a person in general, that was really difficult. And to have to do it with my song and to have to do it and trust that other people are going to get it right and to push myself to speak up. Like, there's so much that went into this. Like, this song, we recorded this two years ago. Wow. And, like, I had to step away from it for a couple months because I was starting to, like, hate it for a second you know yeah. like I, i'm sure you <laughs> like I, I, you know. I know exactly what you're saying yeah like i hated it and then i had to take a break from it and i came back to it fine and then i liked it again and then at the beginning of the pandemic last year we were supposed to record the video and then the pandemic happened so i had to shelve it again for yeah. like a whole year and um i was finally able to make the video back in october and now it's out. So I feel like everything kind of happens for a good reason. And even if it takes a long time, you know, sometimes people like in the music industry now with the way that, you know, our attention spans are at, we feel pressure to keep like banging things out as much as possible so that we can stay relevant or whatnot. And it used to freak me out that I wasn't putting out enough music or putting out enough stuff, but you know, I needed to nurture this project. Like it takes this this particular song took so much out of me and it's not going anywhere and so I I need to 
you know, uh, honor it in the right way, even if it takes time. And um, I'll just say this to anybody out there who constantly struggles with committing to what they want because they're afraid that they're being like too much, I say, screw that. Screw the too much feeling. If you know that you need a certain bass sound, if you know that you need to record on a certain kind of piano, if you know that you need a certain mic, if you know that you need a certain thing, you need a certain mood in the room to get you to like get to that point, like fight for it. And people will not understand you at first and people might resist, but then if you stick to it and then you're happy with it, you're gonna find like a tribe and community of people who like hear you and at the end of the day, you can die happy knowing that, you know, you stood by your craft. So like, even if I don't make it to like a gazillion streams on this, like I don't care, like I can I can die tomorrow knowing that like, I fought for my song and I fought to make it the most clear representation of what I wanted it to be. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's Crayuse, bitch. Crayuse. <laughs> <laughs> Crayuse. Mother, it's I'm Crayuse, cray. Cray. not Cruz. Cause I'm Cray. <laughs> cray. No, I, I, I love that. No, I love that so much. Um, you know, cause I, I think that's a lot of, you know, especially women. Uh, and you know, nothing. I'm not trying to shit on women in any way in the music mm-hmm. industry. But what my my experience is is that if women don't stand up for what they think, and or if they don't. You know, if they don't, um, even, uh, you know, in some situations, I, I see women sort of adopting male, you know, male behavior, just like I'm one of the dudes just to sort of not survive. That's a little drastic, but to just to sort of be in the, you know, be in the in the in the mix, because there is this sort of weird dynamic, uh, especially mm-hmm. if it's a if it's a like one girl and all dude band, you know, it, there can be those weird. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. There can be those weird dynamics. And I've seen it. I've seen it a lot where dudes will just walk all over the front woman at uh, front person. It, because yeah. they're not saying it how they want or or like you're saying they're not they don't know how to speak the language to the exact t and so people you know will d- dismiss you know and, and and especially women men will or dismiss. we get mistaken for being like a bitch yes you know? and yes it's like that's oh, the thing it's oh like, she's a bitch because she wants us exactly. to play it right yeah, or she's <laughs> oh my gosh she just wants to like she wants to do it over again and yeah. I'm like all right you know I. I realize, like, that's the thing. Like, even me trying to, like, speak up in a conversation and not just, like, wait, you know. Like, it happens to me all the time in a group of friends. And I get, like, talked over or I get explained for. Like, <laughs> they tr- people try to explain yeah. for me, thinking that they're being helpful. Like, the intention is nice, but I'm like, hey, you're you're making it as if I can't right. speak for myself. So I was like, I don't want to interrupt you. But I have to, or mm-hmm. else you won't hear me. Yeah, and I'll, and it's not me trying to be rude. Like I need to communicate the way you're communicating so that you hear me. And like if I don't interrupt, you know, at some point, like I'll never be able to finish my sentence. And it's kind of it's rough because, like I said, I everything about pushing for this music and putting these songs out is so cathartic and so transforming because it's forcing me to shake somebody that I used to be. And that was somebody that was just waiting for her turn, being super polite and like not trying to cause any trouble, not trying to get anybody, anybody to like hate her or like I was, I was, and also being like Filipino, I guess. I mean, I, that's that was the other thing, right? Reason why I released this song this month too. It's Asian American heritage. Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month and it's like you know pushing to do this music was a difficult decision because you know uh women musicians weren't I mean now they're now they're celebrated but especially you know people of color weren't really out there like I didn't see that many Filipino musicians that were famous or like big on a big scale like there's a lot of people who are really successful on YouTube, but I would never see them at the Grammys or anything. And like, it used to hinder me from thinking, can I do this? I mean, there was like a lot of things. It's like being a woman, being a Filipino, being like a not 
typical like body shape of um women a woman or whatever or like the magazine things but like that's what i had to choose i had to choose to like stick up for all of that i was like screw it i was like there's enough of us out there who have had body issues i'm gonna stand up i was like i don't care like if i'm not like whatever size that they think i need to be like i need to just put myself out there and make people realize like i got feelings or i got something to say it doesn't matter like what my size or my ethnicity is and seriously so much of this music yeah it's like a breakup song but it's I've, I've said it in some of the promo but it's like it's it's breaking up with a piece of myself that i no longer want to be anymore and that's somebody who's afraid of herself yeah. and i think that's for a lot of us like we need to stop being afraid of what we're really capable of and be willing to withstand the the lashback that's kind of like sorry there's <laughs> that's actually <laughs> for <laughs> stuff i have to take um <laughs> you could take that if you want to if you okay want to <laughs> if you <laughs> want to mute <laughs> yeah do you just mute your side so here i, I can mute you We're gonna let we're gonna let uh, Lori take that call. She needs to take that call. It's important for her. But I I absolutely agree with that sentiment. That um that idea that because I get like uh and, and you know I, I realize that it's harder for women. Um, I mean even even just are you back, Lori? Yeah, she's I back. Have to take a, a medicine. Oh, it's. <laughs> It's all good. It's all, so you're back. You're you're good to go. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Gosh. No, I I was just started talking to chat here about, um, you know, I have those same feelings too, and that's something I had to get to. And I and I'm a dude, you know, and I'm a tall dude, you know, I'm a tall, big, imposing dude, and so it it, it being a smaller you know like a woman foot, literally you like, know like it, it's it's to even feel like you have a place to stand in the world is is weird for uh you know i could see how that just like because for me i'll be in the grocery store and i'll be looking at a product and then i'll feel someone come you know behind me and they're waiting for me to get around and then i feel like rushed and i i feel like i should just stop what i'm doing and get out of the way and i know that there's a difference between finding a place to stand in the world and being an asshole but there is this point where, like, you're constantly feeling like you're in the way. And, like, you are constantly feel like you need to move on to other people's way. And when it's like, no, bitch, you wait your turn like I did. And, and it's like, you got to remind yourself that you're worth standing there, that you are. It's okay for you to stand. It's okay for you to want your music to sound how you want it, especially when your ass is paying for it. Yeah, yeah fucking engineer oh look engineering Dude. engineers are fucking grumpy little turds i know it from experience uh from being one and from from working with a lot of engineers they can be grumpy and and there's nothing worse than a grumpy engineer who's just sucking the energy out of the the studio when it's already a frustrating moment when you realize it's like oh shit it's too fast we might have to re-record everything because yeah uh, like Amber was saying, it's much different to uh, working, playing a live instrument is way different than doing a production track because, well, these are people playing it. You're not just moving little computer notes. Yeah, it's not, it's not just you're one, not just one, like one zero. the wrong note. Right. Because with MIDI, you can actually just go in to the specific yeah. wrong note, delete it or move it and change it to the right note and slow yeah. it down. And it sounds beautiful. Yeah. But you can't do that with life. So like, especially in that moment where you're talking to a, an engineer and you're just feeling like you can't, you know, like you're like, fuck that. I'm going to push past that. It's like it, it, it's it's that is something I've been having to deal with my whole life, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with just pushing past that 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 initial uh, that initial feeling to almost like you got to be polite or something, right? It's, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be polite by not giving this person a by hard not time. Yeah. I'm not going to make trouble for this engineer. He probably has a family. He wants to get home. He doesn't want to be here <laughs> yeah, all night. He's hungry. He's hungry. <laughs> he's, it's like, who gives a fuck about his hunger? Who gives a fuck about his family? I fucking yeah. paid this dude. He's going to do yeah. it how I want yeah. him to do it because I fucking said so. I gave him the money. It's my fucking vision. 
And, and you know, to be fair, like with he, he like the thing. You know, I think I was. I always thought that he was like getting annoyed when I was asking for things. Mm. He tends to be like a really fast working dude, and I, and then it the whole trajectory of the project changed when he started like just telling me a story. He was like. Yeah, you know, my mom's getting into the studio with this engineer and she's afraid to tell him what she wants. But I told my mom, just just tell the engineer. He's like, there's nothing worse than not telling us because then we don't know and then mm. we end up making something that you're not happy with. Right. So I'd rather know. He's like, as much as it's, he's like, it'll be a pain in the ass. Some of these changes are a pain in the ass for sure. He's like, but I would much rather it be a pain in the ass and for it to be something that you're happy with than, you know, for you to hate it and like i had to hear him say that and it was like midway through the process of recording and when i heard that this was like a separate story of his mom trying to speak up to the engineer because she was afraid of wasting his time and he was he was like no it will be a pain in the ass to sometimes alter all these things but at the end of the day whoever is working with you wants to know what you want so say it or else we don't know and I, I, it took that with me with everything I did. I was like, if I see like the mood change in my band's face, or if I get too sensitive to like the way people are around me when I'm asking for this and that, and I want things to change, and it, I feel like everybody's getting impatient with me, that's that's my insecurity, mm. and I have to allow that space for that. And I, the thing is, at the end of the day, they would rather that I said something and that I'm happy at the end of the day with the product that I commissioned them for. And so I just have to accept that like everybody's not gonna be bubbly about every single part of the process all the time. And I think I've almost pressured myself to be like that a lot, to be like all positive, positive vibes mm. only and yeah. bubble stuff. And I honestly, I kinda, I hate that now. <laughs> I hate, I, I hate positive vibes only and <laughs> I, I, and I, as positive as I am, and I, I'm saying this because I want to make sure that people are understanding positive vibes only correctly. It doesn't mean like positive vibes only shouldn't should not mean let's avoid confrontation. Yeah, because that's not what it is. Like positive vibes only. Oh, let's not bring this up because it's gonna make us sad. I'm like, then I don't care for positive vibes only. <laughs> I care for progress vibes only. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> get the shit done vibes. <laughs> like get the shit done vibes like <laughs> kindness like <laughs> kill him with kindness vibes like let's be aggressive with kindness mm. because i realize it's way more respectful to be real with people and my boyfriend helped me out with that too he's like you know if i'm if i'm not saying something to somebody because i don't want to hurt their feelings i'm assuming that they're weak mm. so it's almost like an insult it's yeah. like i'm giving them the respect to know that they can handle what i'm gonna say because they know it's from my heart and when i started thinking about things like that you know um yeah it just made a difference yeah and, like so like i'm committed now to like this but like live streaming too for the past year has helped me out so much and building confidence within myself because there was a point where my weekly live streams i wasn't doing cover music on my Tuesday live streams because we get flagged on Facebook or something. I started doing originals and I was afraid that I'd lose everybody because I was like, who's gonna wanna listen yeah. to an hour of my original music every week? And um, I don't know, I'm glad that I stuck with it because then I found people who resonated with what I do, who accept me for being emotional, having all these like TED talks and like, <laughs> and also, <laughs> being a wacko like yeah. you'll let me you know be my weird self and yeah. then also get emotional i was like okay cool like it's not too haphazard for people dope i found a place yeah and, uh, yeah yeah no i mean th that's beautiful that i think it's always beautiful when people sort of discover their power and like because because we because uh, because we, we can be afraid of our power and we can be afraid of fucking, you know, hurting people's yeah. feelings. But like, uh, like you're saying, it's like the idea of positive vibes only. It's like it doesn't mean let's fucking not hurt anybody's feelings. It, it means it means let's, you know, first of all, if you're working with me, I, I respect you. 
and 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 and, and please just reciprocate Respe reciprocate that respect it's like i've reached out to you because i respect you i want to work with yeah. you it's like please reciprocate the respect by being on time knowing the song having things ready and prepared to go do you need to take this one no, no, that's my my. I, I didn't turn off the alarm. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but 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 the, you know, I I just find it so you know refreshing when people were just like you know, and it's like fuck that. I'm gonna you know this is this is my song or this is how I want it, and it's like that. It's really hard to fight against those urges to be polite and 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 yeah, and to and it is a fear of of your own power of of like. Uh, how far you can go i mean it's, it's like it, it, it it's scary to think and you know as artists we're, we're always fighting against these things these sort of internal battles and yeah. feeling feeling like some people feel like they're frauds and shit it's like you know all the time <laughs> but, but, every day <laughs> every couple like, hours it's like am i really people have no idea how much of a <laughs> dork and loser i really am like it's always I was like, I'll be posting, you know, on Instagram, like this really nice photo or these like, cool videos. And then like two hours later, I'll be like, I'm such a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'll fucking, I'll, I'll put up something like, I know that's like incendiary. And it's yeah. just like, I know that this is going to piss people off. And at the time I'm all fired up and ready to go. And then it's like, like, uh... like an hour later, I'll smoke like a joint and be like, Oh man, I'm such a piece of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, everyone's gonna think I'm some racist asshole. I just care too much. Uh, yeah. I I think that it's very normal, especially for women. I don't think we like being pushy because we're more empathetic to other people, and we don't like upsetting people. Finding the balance mm. between that and getting what you want can be tricky. Me too. Hate that people expect me to be positive all the time. Authenticity is key. Yes. Ted yes, does. Donna. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, just exactly. fighting against that that urge to be polite. It's like sometimes it's fucking it, it, therapy session for free. <laughs> sometimes it's you gotta. Sometimes you gotta fucking just hurt people's feelings. And like that's the thing too. If if you're working in a professional setting and you do talk to somebody and you're being respectful and you're asking something that's reasonable, and maybe it is a pain in the ass and it might require more work, but it's like you're there because again, I respect you. I'm paying you for your time. And if, if you can't tell somebody in a respectful way that what they're doing is, is not, you know, you don't want that, and they get mad and storm out or they cause a big fit, then fuck them anyways. You know, like you were yeah. saying, there comes a point in your life where you got to take a fucking evaluation of the people and in, in, in the, in the activities that you're involved in. Because right. it's like uh, you, you have to look at who's influencing you and who is – who makes you feel better about yourself and who makes you feel worse about yourself and 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 who who gets you in the situations where you're finding yourself uh you know uh, uncomfortable or doing things you wouldn't normally do and it's like yeah. you have to really reevaluate you have to evaluate yourself and who you talk to all the time because yeah cuz I, I mean for me as soon as i stop drinking and all my friends who knew I stopped drinking stopped talking to me. That's when I started getting the most work done. Yeah. <laughs> I started because I actually became a musician. You know, I actually was able to work as a musician. I was actually yeah. able to to uh, create and 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 work with people and maintain relationships and and fucking and you know like build on relationships and collaborate and do awesome things. Mighty, mighty with the gifts mighty, of. Mighty. Matsumate. <laughs> <laughs> I I love your I love your uh, I love the way that you play piano. Um Oh, thank you. What what what's your training? Yeah, I, you just have like a really great feel. Like that, it's. If, I wish I could play piano like you do. I play. Are it you more. kidding me? You solo like a beast, and I was like, okay. Okay, right, there's a different. But but then it's like when it comes to those pretty chords and your left hand, you can do cool things too, and like. <laughs> it's like it, it all falls apart. It all falls apart real quick. <laughs> the thin veneer, right? 
It's like like what we were just saying. The the, the impo- imposter. Yeah. I feel like that all the time. I was like, let me hide. See, this is my trick. Like I, I was like, let me hide behind cool sounds. I don't have to like figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, but you, but you, thank you for those melodicas, Bonnie. Um, I do. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I recognize that I have skills, but then I also recognize that I, I that, that I have a lot of things I need to work on, and so it's, <laughs> you know, I, I don't like to sit here and talk terrible about myself, but I know where I stand. <laughs> Positive yeah. vibes only. Positive vibes only. Can't talk only, bad about yourself. Good. Don't even You're criticize yourself. Insecurities, Mike. <laughs> Look, look, even if you do suck, don't tell yourself you suck, all right? Like, <laughs> oh. Nah, man, I'm calling you because I feel like crap. Please don't give me advice on how to feel better. Just let me feel like crap and tell me that you love me anyway. Mm. That is all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just need I just need someone to say they love me. That's all. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't want the advice to how to get better. Well, but, um, so what's your training with the piano? So I started when I was seven. I am 32 now, so, like, I, what's it called? It started off, like, classical-ish, and then it stopped around 14, and then, okay, I used to be part of youth group back when, like, back when I did that stuff. Um, I was in youth group, and the keyboardist, who usually played for us, couldn't be there one summer, and so they were like, Lorianne, you play piano, go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, shoot, I'm like, I... I don't play this. I play stuff that's written on pieces of paper. But that summer, at 14 or 15 years old, I had to learn how to play chords. And I was forced into it because nobody else could play keyboards. So I was like, shoot, all right. Forced me to learn how to play chords. And then, because I learned how to play chords, I joined jazz band in mm. high school. And he took a chance on me. And he was like, I can see that you're working hard. Go ahead, come into jazz band. Like You're, you're going to shadow this other piano player. You'll figure it out. And then since then, I've kind of been, like, you know, um, playing based off of that and, like, uh, writing stuff. <laughs> 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 All these things. I know, yeah, I think because of jazz class, um, you know, everything that I tend to want to play are, like, minor seven chords. And I'm like, damn it, you know, sometimes if I want to play, like, a regular folk song, I cannot help but put... <laughs> these extensions i'm like this doesn't sound good like <laughs> i put it in my twitch bio i was like you can grill me for overusing these chords because i really do and you know like bob dylan is not asking for extensions yeah. <laughs> like or whatever yeah he doesn't but. need a flat five slash 11 chord he just needs yeah the like, a minor need... baby <laughs> i just need it like i'm just doing I'm just stick i just need this <laughs> but i can't help it like everything i just always want to add right Everything well, in there. That's also the jazzy R and B side coming out. That because they they live in there. True. To me, the way you play, like it sounds like you came up in church, like like a, a, a like a Baptist, like Baptist church, uh, but but kind of it's similar, similar sort of yeah. Like I definitely had a. I was part of when I was younger. I was part of a charismatic Catholic group. Mm-hmm. So there's so, yeah, like some the music that they played was a little more pop. Mm. Um, I think being part of that group growing up, though, it also taught me how to like be a hype person because <laughs> <laughs> I was like the kid with the tambourine, yeah. like "Come on, everybody! Like, let's clap, whatever." But I mean, I've I've since left the church, but um, I feel like part of that spirituality that I got from, like, what I kept though was. Um, what I learned about how music can connect to people and how music can kind of bring people to a state of mind. Yeah. And I learned that in youth group, but then I carried it on with me throughout my original music um, and going forward and then realizing that like music has such an impact on how you could change the mood of the room. And um, yeah, uh, I guess that's me. <laughs> 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 So amazing how someone can taking interest in a young person can send them off on a lifelong adventure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That the, it's the real. yeah, just someone just giving, and, and you know, it's sad. It's sad that um, there's so many people who just need a little encouragement, and yeah. there's just no one to encourage them. 
and and it's I, like it, it like literally just someone needs like a little bit of encouragement a little like just even say like wow that's a really nice drawing there billy you should yeah. keep going you know even if it's just something like that you know but there's some people in this world that want to like steal that from children or steal that from they want to like construct it they or construct like, it yeah how to do it and like if it wasn't for this jazz band teacher who took a chance on me because i played like shit at the <laughs> audition i know it i was like i know it sounded terrible yeah. but he was like you're trying mm. go ahead and at the time i was like a theater major in high school or whatever whatever that means like but I was I wasn't making it into any plays. I wasn't I wasn't making any of my audition. I was like getting rejected left and right everywhere. Mm. And he was the first person that said yes to me. And it wasn't theater, it was music. Right. And I I kid you not, like I'm getting chills now talking about it, but our class was we would play through like jazz standards and I remember like soloing for the first time, like with my voice and just probably singing nonsense like over summertime and like ah, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> in the classroom in my uniform. And I remember this euphoria that I felt in that classroom, getting to just improvise over summertime. And I feel like it opened up a world for me that I had no idea existed. And it opened up this idea of like creativity and freedom. And if it wasn't for that jazz teacher who took a chance on me, literally I had no other knowledge and I learned everything in that class. And then, you know, uh just going forward people just taking a chance on you mm. and that's uh, another friend of mine like when i was 14 i'd watch all my older friends play in the city and they had gigs and i just you know watch all doe eyed looking at them and then eventually i sang back up for one of my friend's bands and then one of the bookers was like oh she's good like why don't you book her a show and i was like i don't have my own music i was 17 at the time and my friend was like I'm going to book you. You're going to write five songs in a month and then you're going to play a show in a month. And like, that's how I started writing more music. You know, he forced, he's like, you're going to write five songs. You're going to make yourself a set. I'm going to book you a show and you're going to do it. And that worked. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. It worked. Pressure I makes was diamonds. 17, my first like gig in like Chinatown or like Mark no, St. St. Mark's place in New York City and like I just sat up there with like a broken toenail because <laughs> I rode my bike to go get whatever. <laughs> so I had like a wet sock on one hand and on one foot or whatever and but it's the thing, it's like people taking a chance on you and like I um I teach students like little kids and I constantly, sometimes I get parents that are telling me, oh, my daughter is not doing this. My son's not doing this. I want them to be more, I want them to sit still more. I want them to do all this. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> when I'm in person, like I'll walk around with the kids before the piano. We'll do rhythm stuff, jumping up and down. And, or I'll spend a lot of the time like letting them get creative. Like I'll play a, a jam on the piano and then I'll have them play certain notes. I was like, all right, let's just feel it. And you know, if you open yourself up to hear what kids have to create, they're, they're so creative, so creative. And then you lose it along the way because people tell you how to be creative. And then you lose that like ingenuity or whatnot. And I try so hard with my students to make sure that they tap into that. I'm not gonna tell them not to, like when I, when I get into lessons with them, I'm like, all right, let's write a song. What do you wanna write about? They're like, Roblox and Pokemon. I'm like, cool. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. They're like, uh, there was a Pokemon ghost and there was like Dragon Frost thing happening and then it ate a donut. I'm like, cool. <laughs> Tell me what else is <laughs> happening. Dragon Frost ate a donut. Yeah, like saying yes to everything that yeah. they're doing. Because I was like, I was that kid that everybody said, no, you're too much. You're too weird. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, nah. I was like, sticking to my weirdness has led me to right here, right now. And yeah. so... We got to look out for the, the younger ones. For sure. Make sure they got a voice, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that that's what's so sad about it is it's like the, the, the kids are so easily influenced and, and kids, yeah, they haven't had their self-esteem trampled on yet. And, yeah. and, and it seems like the people who are supposed to be teaching and leading them into, you know, into 
thinking for themselves and critical thinking and being creative are, are the first ones to sort of step on it and yeah and ruin it and, and really deter people i mean i've heard so many people who tell me it's like yeah i was in set you know in, in sixth grade my art teacher said you know you're just fucking loser and you'll never that sucks and blah 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 so I stopped, and then you see them, like, always sketching these amazing things. You know, like, yeah. I have friends who, like, are always yeah. like, oh, no, my, my, my teacher said I suck, so I just didn't think I was good enough to do it. And it's like, damn, you know, like, you're, you're ruining, you're not only ruining someone's chance at being happy. It's not like you're not an artist, so you're not happy in your life, but not only are you ruining someone's chance to... Uh, be truly happy and pursue a, a passion in their life, but you're also stealing away the potential of what that art could have done to influence others. You know, you're yeah. stealing away an idea. You know, you're stealing away this like community idea that could have been set into the world that could have changed people. You know, he could have drawn the next Mona Lisa or whatever it is. You know, the next NFT non fungible token. <laughs> you know, like. He could have been the one to fucking, you know, that masterpiece NFT that's oh worth millions God. and you just shit on it. And the next NFT, for real. Oh the next God. NFT for artist real. is fucking is done for yeah. because, wow. you know, like because somebody because because they, they're because some people are so uh, dismayed with their own failures in life that they have to fucking. They have to bring in other people down with them. Rain on everybody else's parade. Fucking Hell dickheads, no. dude. I can't stand Don't. this. One time a music teacher told me I could have a good singing voice if I actually worked at it. I barely ever sang before then, but I have been singing ever since. Uh, it's so powerful at that age, especially to hear encouragement. Yeah, and it was just a simple yes. thing, right? Like a simple yes, thing. Yes, sweet potato. You sing it, sweet potato. <laughs> Say it, sweet potato. Say it. Say it, sweet potato. <laughs> Grown-ups don't think that being an artist is a reasonable career choice. Yeah, and that's a whole nother thing. Oh, my God. So that's the other thing I was fighting, too. Are you seriously? Like, the amount of people that were like, oh, you're Filipino? Don't you want to be a nurse? And I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. I, I swear. I was, I'm like, you don't know what? You and I'm not, like, I, that's great. For everybody else who chose to be a nurse, that's cool. It just wasn't my path, right? And, like. I kid you not, I was in class teaching. I was in the middle of doing music as my job. And some one parent was like, hey, you're Filipino, right? I'm like, yeah. They're like, why didn't you want to be a nurse? I'm like, Oof. mid song. I'm like, I was like, I'm the black sheep. I decided to go this route. <laughs> I was like, what? How are you asking me this while I'm doing the job? That you're doing yeah. That I do? That's a little cringy. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So uh, I'm Nervous curious. People. Uh, you know, your family, uh, mm -hmm. how did your family respond to you growing up? Were, were, you know, and you're like, I want to pursue art, you know, like, was that something they accepted or was it a, it is both. Are right. you, fr and, and I don't, and you don't have to answer this if you don't feel comfortable. Are you first generation? Oh yeah. Okay. So, first generation. Okay. okay. I'm proud of that. No, 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 no. I, yeah, me too. Me too. My mom, my mom's f fresh off the boat. Well, yeah, fresh over the straight border up. is what I should say. <laughs> <laughs> she came straight from the motherland, so you know, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. So I'm, I'm proud of that as well. I, I'm just, I just know what that entails as well, especially Catholics. Um, yeah. You know, there's a certain mindset, kind mm -hmm. of a conservative mindset, when it comes right. to life and and what you should be doing and what work means uh what mm -hmm. was your experience i know we're we're running out of time here so oh, uh, yeah. and i want to play that video again without sure, sure. emote walls <laughs> and me making a bunch of crazy <laughs> shit going on during it um so at the beginning i mean the thing is it was interesting because my mom was the one who book who like got me piano lessons at first and then she was also the one who like when i said i was interested in singing she found me a voice teacher but oh. it's like her support I feel like both my parents, their way of supporting was like financially just being like, here, okay, here's the lesson. But when I was, when I would tell them, hey, I have a concert coming up, I got a solo coming in, you know, the questions would be like, well, how long is the solo? Do you still want us to be there? Or how come you don't have a longer song? How come? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> or like, oh my God. And it was, it's weird because like, they, I mean, they're they're really supportive now, <laughs> you know, because I mean, I mean, they've helped me with whatever I needed. But I feel like that kind of like cheering, like, yeah, that's my daughter. Yeah. Like, 
that wasn't as loud. You know? <laughs> I, yeah. I, like they were silently supporting me. Like everybody else would be like, "Well, Lorian's doing this." They're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was it was nuts because I would tell my parents like big news you know like last year over the pandemic it was funny like i i got i made it to the local newspaper like newsday on a front page for live streaming and i'm like hey look this happened like i'm so excited and they're like oh but the picture of your face like the, why did they choose that picture like it <laughs> why is it you, you don't look like if this is not the best picture of you how come it looks like this and i'm like jesus christ <laughs> you know, can't you just be happy for me Every big deal, yeah. like that, it's something I had to announce. Like I've had really cool things happen in my life, but there was always just like, oh well, how much money did you make out yeah, of it? Yeah, oh, that's you're playing, <laughs> you're playing a gig at like Mercury Lounge in the city. That's really cool. But are they like, yeah. are they paying you well for how it? Much like, you get are paid? they? I'm like, oh, <laughs> can't you just be happy that I'm playing <laughs> Mercury <laughs> Lounge? <laughs> well, it's a lot of that, you know what I mean? And I, I'm trying to find humor in it because I'm like, like you said, you know, it's the conservative thing. It's like I think they they come from the mentality of trying to make sure that they do something to survive Mm. and like when they know that art is something that's kind of wishy-washy it's hard and what comes off as like judgment i think is really just protection and they're like they don't want us to suffer the way that they did and back wherever they were from and i've learned to appreciate that and the thing is the more i've pushed myself to be serious about what I'm doing and like show everybody like how serious I am about it. Like slowly everybody that was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like is backing me up now. And I'm like that, but that's, that's what I got it. I mean, that's the biggest thing, the biggest lesson I learned. It's like the amount of people that keep, you know, going against you while you're on the up climb of <laughs> it, stick to it, take yourself seriously. And then eventually, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, psh, I've known that person since yeah. she was a kid. I was like, but you didn't say that to me back then. Right? <laughs> now you're over here. Fucking <laughs> it's crazy, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, that, that, that situation, you know, even, even if a lot of kids face that situation, even with, you know, even with parents that are American parents, you know, but... But there is something that with, especially with immigrate, immigration and, and, yeah, and yeah. the idea of people coming here and starting a new life so their children can live a prosperous life that, you know, that they, you know, this is what they came here for. This is for them. And then for, for us to be like, hey, I'm going to go and invest my time and energy into something that is totally <laughs> like a, a gamble. no path. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah, there's no straight path forward at all. I might fail, and I might be broke, and you might be supporting me for the rest of your life. Um, <laughs> that's what I want to do. That's what all that hard work and all that all that time coming over here and getting your paperwork together and then all that, yeah, all like, those jobs that you worked, <laughs> those late so hours. So your daughter can sing her feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so your daughter can express herself. <laughs> I know. That's like what used to make me feel so, like, I don't know, like spoiled almost. I was like, here I am. Fred, like I'm having a, a crisis because I can't get a song down and I can't get this production right. And my parents had to like figure how to make a new life for themselves and afford a house in New York. I was like, that was their problem at 28 years old. Like, what am I doing? I am like <laughs> depressed about <laughs> something. I'm like, you know, but it's at the end of the, I feel like like uh, the more that I kept pushing for it and the more that I kept really being serious about it the more everybody knew how serious i was about it and it wasn't until maybe like this pandemic where my parents expressed to me they're like you know lorianne like you've never given up even if even if stuff got gets hard like you've never given up and you've always found a way and i've in the 32 years of my life like i've never heard those words wow. coming out of them and it's not that i never it's not that they don't love me, you know, it's just like that kind of like acknowledgement of, hey, like you've been working at this for a while, like we believe you and it's it's nuts. And um, I, I know we're about to show the video soon, but that's the other thing. It's like that ex who this song is about. It's my segue. I like it. I love um, it. <laughs> I love it. The, that ex is made me feel that same way, too, that you know, like I was too much 
like I was I wanted too much or that like you know what I was thinking for myself was like too much and I mean I was fucked up in the relationship because I didn't know how to speak up and so I did like I wasn't the best person I would just avoid things I wouldn't be truthful about how I felt and it messed him up and it's not it w I wasn't fair to him either because because I was too afraid to be honest I ended up fooling him and think him thinking that I was okay with everything and then it all like crashed at the seams and that that opening line once you guys watch the video again that opening line where I um what's it called where did we go wrong you take a hit I flip a switch now I'm giving in you turn and look away you hit a wall like you hit a wall he literally the day of our breakup he literally like punched a wall and he's a he's a fireman so like he really strong he punched a wall in his like door and like his knuckles bled and it's that line in the song is like figuratively you hit a wall you can't go any further and literally that that day he hit a wall wow. and we we broke up and uh yeah, I feel like a lot of that relationship was really about me fighting for myself and fighting to be where I'm at right now. And um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was Ted beautiful. Talk. That was beautifully said. And and you know, this is the the you know the, the I feel like this video probably gave you a little cathar catharsis and. Probably for sure. Probably helped singe up some of those loose ends of emotion that's flailing around like a, a down electrical uh, wire, you know. So yeah. um, that's wonderful, and I think that's a great segue. So this, so we're gonna watch, uh, we're gonna watch the new single this time, uh, the video, which is this is a, a, the the world premiere right here, folks. <laughs> um, this time, the new single and video from. La Cruz, <laughs> Laurie, <Laurier>. Cruz, bitch. <laughs> it's Cruz, <crazy>, bitch. <laughs> Get it right. Um, you know what? Like you know what? You know what, Laurie? You should just start doing it as part of your like. I'm gonna take a stand for for Laurie, and you just start <laughs> yeah. correcting motherfuckers in chat. It's Cruz, Cruz, <laughs> Cruz. <Yeah, laughs> it's Cruz. All right. It's Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> Back up. Get it right. Get it right. This is Lori's time to shine. All right, guys, we're going to listen to um, this time. And do you have time to just wrap up or do you need yeah. to go right yeah. now? Okay, cool. We'll watch the video. We'll come back and we'll wrap up and we'll raid out. All right, guys, enjoy the video. It's going to, it's a, it's a good one. So enjoy it. Fresh. Take a hit, I flip the switch, and now you're giving in. You turn and looked away. You hit a wall, I'll take the fault. There's nothing I could say.
Fresh. Boom. And there it was. Thank you so much for sharing that and letting us uh, put that on uh, the show. I appreciate Thank you. that. Um, uh, so, uh, Raina, who are we going to raid? Uh, and why, why Raina is going to give us some names here. Um, uh, how can people get a hold of you? How can people find you? I'm also going to drop the links here so you guys can go ahead and click around and make sure you follow your girl. Make sure you uh, go over there. You can follow me. You can find all my stuff on my website. You can follow me at <clears throat> L-A-C-R-E-U-S music.com. Bing. Um, <laughs> bing. We need the bing. bing. We did need that bing. bing. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> you can find me on Twitch, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Same thing. L-A Crayus music. L-A-C-R-E us music. Um yeah and i'm on spotify too so i got another song out there called nothing lasts forever that i released last uh year so you could check that out too and um, it's an excellent excellent song as well she provides you. her own stingers yes indeed, indeed. <laughs> she, she's all in one package everyone it's going to be on oh, youtube yes, wednesday Donna. yes yes i'll be uploading it to youtube on wednesday so you can watch it as much as you want there you on go wednesday there you go. And of course, you'll find the link in the show notes for all the people listening in the audio side of this. I put all of her socials and the, the link to the video is all in the show notes. So go click around and do it big. Thank you so much, Lori. I had such a great time chatting with you and getting Thank to you, know you. And um, it just I it's just I just you're such a lovely human being. So I, I appreciate that. You're, you're awesome. Thank you. Yo, can we get some woos though? For we speak English good. <laughs> can we get some woos? <laughs> can we get because... some woos and show that we got? We can get our own woos. <gasps> oh my god! I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I swear. Every time I hear somebody in, in like in my in, in real life like going woo, I o I only think of you now because of that. Because <laughs> of that stupid ass thing. Like, no, it's great. Because I'm just like <laughs> woo. We're Thank like, you, Bonnie. <laughs> I hear it all over. All right. But no, thank you so much for having me. And I, I swear, um, it's been like before I got into Twitch, I was watching you, I was watching Reina, I was watching Mrs. Artsy Pants and like Calvin and like getting to know what the Twitch was about and seeing how real y'all were and like, you know, how like you really made everything your own. It gave me a lot of like excitement to get on this platform. So shout out to. <laughs> You speak English good, and Raina and these artsy pants, and Calvin and everybody out there, because oh it's a God. really cool community to be in. Calvin, Calvin's awesome as well, and, and thank you for that. that. That's very kind of you to say, because I have no idea what I'm doing over here, but <laughs> it's <laughs> doing know. something, <laughs> right? Know. Right, yeah, something's <laughs> happening. So, what? How dare you? Oh, dang it. I'm such a nuts. Thanks, Raina. Uh, we're going to raid over to Will O'Keys, everybody. He is a friend of, uh, of, of Raina's chat, friend of us. Oh, Papa, thank you so much. Mighty, mighty for gifting Papa Sweet that, that sub. I, I really appreciate it. You're the best. And uh, anybody who's new, who's, who's new in here, uh, this is for you. Uh, hello and welcome to We Speak English Good TV. I'm your announcer, Seth Rogen. Uh, now, everyone, put your doobies in the air or your hands together, <laughs> whichever you prefer, uh, for your host, uh, Mike E.P. Yay. Thank you, Seth. All right, guys, we are raiding over to Willow Keys. Uh, we will be back on Saturday. We're not, and then I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation, everybody. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm not on vacation. So, um, we're going to be doing a loosely thing. We're going to be doing some streams while in San Diego. So stick around for that. I'll make sure I update everybody and send out emails and stuff. So no, we're not going to do Craigslist today because, uh, uh, Lori has to get going and you know, we're just, I'm, I'm on vacation hype, Bonnie. I'm on yeah. vacation. <laughs> I, I was going to do games, but, uh, Lori needs to get out of here and I, it's just not fun without, without the guests. So, all right. Sorry. I had no one to my bed. You're good. Bad. It's not all your fault. It's all my <laughs> fault. Everyone. It's my <laughs> fault. Don't be, don't be mad at Lori. Uh, but Kelvin Thomas is going to be on the show on the 31st. Yeah. So 
Uh, Monday the 31st, Calvin Thomas will be on the show. Speaking of him. Bye, everybody. We're rating. <laughs> All right, Lori, thank you so much again. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, go in, go in peace, my friend. I appreciate it. <laughs> the audio will be out here soon. Oh, cool. let me let me end this. I always forget to end. <laughs>